And I think this is the problem and, and, and this is where it is very, very important as a business owner, um, as a CEO that you realize and, and acknowledge that these people, they work for you. And this is not a power play kind of thing, right? It's not a, ooh, I'm more important than you kind of thing. But I do believe those of us who are entrepreneurial leaders who don't necessarily have a background in finance and accounting, we can let the finance and accounting types intimidate us and we can let them say like, oh, well, you just don't understand. I, this is how it's supposed to be done. This is how I have to report this. And there's a difference between, yeah, this is how I've got to report it for tax purposes. And this data is not helpful for me. And so to push back and say, this isn't helpful. This isn't realistic. I can't make decisions based on this data. And you, accounting finance person, need to figure out how to bridge the gap between what is and what I need. That is your job. And if you can't do it, you can't occupy the seat. That's what we need to demand. Hey, everybody. We are here with another episode of Business Lunch with your host, my counterpart, Ryan Dice. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Good, buddy. How you doing? Good. And myself, Roland Frazier. We are going to talk about one of the most fascinating, cutting edge, insightful, exciting, exhilarating topics that either Ryan or I could think of to talk about accounting today. Accounting. Welcome you to- got, You got to set this up a little better than that because we're going to lose literally all the listeners. Why do you want to talk about accounting and finance? Because you're like, for the record, for everybody listening, Roland told me, he's like, yeah, I know exactly what I want to talk about on the on that you know, the podcast today. I was like, oh, cool. You, you seem so excited. And, and I, right yeah. before we go live, you're like, yeah, it's accounting and finance. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I don't even want to be here right now. So why, why do you want to talk about this? What's going on and why does it matter? Because I think that, um, I think that how you work with your CFO can be a positive or negative experience for the entire culture of the company. And um, having recently had a 10 years of reporting that I just couldn't stand anymore come to a head on one of our companies that we have and another company where um, the accountant, we went through some interesting challenges as we were talking about converting to GAAP, uh, generally accepted accounting principles to be in GAAP com <clears throat> compliance so that we could be a better exit candidate when we want to sell the company. And, um, we moved accounting, we changed accounting methods from cash to accrual, um, and it had impact. And, um, and I just wanted to talk about it because it's very easy to let the tail wag the dog when it comes to accounting. And I want you guys to know that you need to be vigilant about that not happening. And um, so I'll, I'll tell the story that Ryan and I have experienced for way too long, way, way too long. Um, that finally just got the better of me and, you know, was like, come on, let's, let's change this. It's, it's completely unhelpful. So our accounting did not have in these companies, um, really a budget. I mean, not a, a thought out budget it had like ideas of what we thought things were going to be, but not a, a good formal budgeting process. And, um, the report that we received daily for 10 years plus was always pretty much in the red because it assumed that all of the expenses that were coming were going to come, which is helpful to know what are the expenses that are going to come, but it's not helpful to continually feel like you're losing. And um, the reason that it continually felt like we were losing is because it didn't include any projections for any income. So it was basically, if we look forward as much as 60 days, by the way, <clears throat> and we disregard the savings that we've got, and we only look at the cash flow that we've got right now in our operating accounts, and we pay all of the expenses and have no income, but don't get to draw on savings. In, including, by the way, no new income from, from uh, existing subscriptions, monthly recurring revenue, accounts none receivable. Of none of the historical income. Yeah. Not, not even income that, we, that has already been sold that we would expect to arrive in the period. Um, definitely no new income that we would expect to generate as a result of just business efforts. Um, none of that was included. It was none of the good and it was all of the bad. So it was nothing but depressing. And, and I, you know, we talked about it and talked about it a few times and uh, talked with our accounting person about it and it just never did get changed. And I finally, you know, hit the breaking point last week because it was like, Ooh, we're opening up the next 60 days and look, you're even more in debt. You know, it's a, 
And I'm just like, but we're not. This does not accurately at all present our financial position. And so let's get off our asses and put the freaking numbers that we expect and the ones we know are going to come in, in there. By the way, this these particular businesses are heavily income loaded to the back because of how things got sold on recurring. So like the last week is the one where most of the cash comes in. So, uh, so my first thing is be careful because and Ryan, I want I would love for you to speak to how you feel about this too. But I was just mad every time I opened that and I would disregard it and just not open it for two, three weeks, which is not a healthy way to keep track of what's going on with the business because it was unhelpful. Not only did it not include the the income that was expected and, and historical, but it didn't tell me really with any great specificity what I could do about anything. So it was just basically an exercise in depression every day when I looked at it, which was typically the morning. And so I just stopped looking at it. And then I happened to open it again, you know, it was like two weeks ago. And I was like, oh, I got to look at this stupid thing. And it had just, it was with the message of, hey, we're opening up expenses into this now. And I'm like, no, more, no, more. So, um, so it's changed now and it includes forward looking things and things that we expect to come in so that it's not the completely depressing picture. Ryan, your thoughts? <laughs> I think the rub is you have on, on the, the entrepreneurial mindset is one that is hot, incredibly positive, incredibly optimistic. And, and so we're always assuming that everything is going to work out, that everything's going to be great, that everything's going to be up and to the right. That is the, the general assumption of most entrepreneurs. If it weren't, you would never get into business because let's face it, it's kind of a ludicrous activity. I mean, there's, there's a fair bit of risk you know, a, a lot of, 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 of walking very thin ropes without a net. So you've got to be incredibly optimistic to be an entrepreneur. I think because of that, a lot of non-entrepreneurial types, so a lot of operational types, certainly a lot of finance and accounting types, feel like it is their job to be a foil to the natural entrepreneurial optimism. And, and, and they somehow think that 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 what they are doing is, is good to basically offset the rosy picture with the here's the worst case scenario picture. And I think to a certain extent they're right, but as with everything else, it's got to be kept into balance. So what we never want is we never want an, you know, somebody who is in charge of accounting and finance to tell us what we want to hear. Um, you, you cannot have that. At the same time, if it's only doom and gloom, if it's only the worst possible version of the story, not only is it incredibly depressing and, and do entrepreneurs, to, and I appreciate you, you acknowledging like, I just stopped looking at it, right? Because I think that this is the reason that a lot of entrepreneurs don't get into finance and accounting because it's intimidating and because it's ultimately a little bit depressing. And so they'd rather just bury their head in the sand and that can be really destructive. So number one, it's depressing, but number two, it's also inaccurate. Like what, what, what we were looking at was inaccurate. And in many cases, it was causing us to panic a little bit and say like, oh, we need to pull some rabbits out of a hat and, you know, make some stuff going because we're going to be in the red when no, we're not. No, we're not. Now, we've been doing this long enough that we sort of had started to adjust, you know, do, have our own mental adjustments based on, you know, those numbers. But I, I, I do believe that the biggest lesson is entrepreneurs, business owners, it is your job to figure out. How, how do we do budgeting? Um, how, how does our accounting process work? And to partner with your accounting and finance people to produce numbers and results that number one, you understand, that, you know, number two are, are, are accurate and allow you to make decisions. Because if you just live in your bubble and they just live in theirs, you're going to have what we have had. And it's because none of us just wanted to just suck it up and have the conversation about these particular companies. I think we were all just tired. So that's, I guess, my, well, my take. I, I think you, one of the things as an entrepreneur, I, I know I am guilty of it, um, and I suspect you are too, is when I come up against an obstacle that certainly, if it's an obstacle that repeats itself or I find someone to be unhelpful, my immediate tendency is to go around it and not through it and to just basically say, that's dead to me. So this accounting person is dead to me. 
they're not helpful. I'll get the information I need to run the business a different way. That's also kind of lazy and irresponsible because you should you should support the team that you've got to get the results that you need or you need a different team is the true you know thing that the that the manager wants but uh at least in that one I have the excuse of I'm not really the CEO so you know I can talk about it and say this is not helpful and so I stopped looking at it not to bury my head in the sand, which I do think is a risk for people, but I, I stopped looking at it because it wasn't helpful. Yeah. And so I went around it to get the other information that I needed and just basically said, this thing is sitting out there. And I did talk about it, in fairness to me, about five times over the 10-year period saying, this is terrible, and we just never did anything about it. But, yeah, and um, in, I was saying, in fairness to the, to the leadership team over there, because yeah, neither you or I are CEOs of, of, of this of these this particular group of companies. They yeah. did actually create a budget. They did work out a framework for a new reporting process. It was never implemented, and that CEO also just kind of got frustrated and was like, "I'm just going to do my own. Like, I'm going to be looking yeah. at my own numbers. I'm going to be going to the PNL. I'm just going to ignore that report for the same thing." It's like I've. You know, I've got so it. We're I'm just... accounting resources to prepare the report. Ex that nobody looked at. Exactly. And then ultimately, and I think this is the problem, and, and, and this is where it is very, very important as a business owner, um, as a CEO, that you realize and, and acknowledge that these people, they work for you. And this is not a power play kind of thing, right? It's not a, oh, I'm more important than you kind of thing. But I do believe those of us who are entrepreneurial, leaders who don't necessarily have a background in finance and accounting, we can let the finance and accounting types intimidate us. And we can let them say like, oh, well, you just don't understand. I, this is how it's supposed to be done.